And that's where I think being an introvert really helps you is that I don't get caught up in whether or not people like me because I don't really care if people like me. I get really caught up in uh, in finding ways to like them and in creating emotional connections that bind them to me in a way that makes it almost impossible for them not to say yes when I ask. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, I got started in sales in high school. As crazy as it sounds, I had joined the yearbook in 11th grade because in my senior year, I didn't really want to work that hard, and the your book was full of girls and I was really into girls and into sports. So it seemed like a natural thing to do. So I joined the yearbook and that spring, Mr. Rouse, who was our yearbook advisor came in and said, Hey, you got to go out and sell some ads. So we had to sell ads for the yearbook. We had 30 days, a quota of about $300. And I could tell immediately nobody liked to sell ads because everybody was rolling their eyes and they were, Oh my God, I got to sell ads. I didn't know any better. So I went out and I, I lived in a little place called Harlem, Georgia, and which is one stop sign in the middle of nowhere. So I went out, went downtown, went to Hall's hardware store, walked in, reached my hand out. Mr. Hall, I sell ads for the yearbook. Would you like to buy an ad? And he looked at me and reached behind the counter, opened up this big checkbook, and he stroked me a check for an ad. And that was when I fell in love with sales. Like I could go ask people for things and they would give me money. Like I'm sales crack right there. And I ended up going all over that town, all over the next town, all over Augusta, Georgia. I sold $3,700 in ads, came back, sat down with all the girls in the, in the class and me, because I was the, the token man at the time. And everybody went through what they sold 30 days later. Most people hadn't even gotten their quota. Most people had gone home, sold an ad to their mom or dad or what have you. And then they asked me, and I had this wad of checks that was like this thick. And I'm like, I sold $3,700 and nobody believed it. You could just see the, like, um, in their faces. That's when I really fell in love with sales. I mean, because you can sell stuff and then you can shock people. And then on the way out the the, the room, Mr. Mr. Rouse grabbed me and said, that was amazing. I can't believe you did that. I'm going to make you editor of the yearbook. And then I figured out, man, if you can sell, you can make it rain. If you make it rain, people will give you more stuff. So I ended up being editor of the yearbook. Of course, all the girls at that point then hated me because I wasn't supposed to have the job. Now I'm the boss. But I learned a lot about sales, and that's when I fell in love with it. That's when I knew that this was something that I probably wanted to do because it was fun. I go out, I talk to people, I get to know them, I ask for money, and they give me money. I, I, don't, I can't figure out a better way of doing things. So I, I got into sales, and I've been doing it ever since. And would you consider yourself an extrovert? No, I'm I am a total introvert. I'm uh, I'm I'm really terrible around crowds of people. I say terrible. I, I mean I can be good around crowds of people. I just walked out of the outbound conference, so we had you know a couple of thousand people all together for the first time, and I'm walking around talking to people, shaking hands. But I'm in an environment where I'm on stage, so I'm in that environment. It's my conference, my you know our user conference. So I'm totally on stage, totally doing what I like to do. But get, if you send me to a party, I'm I'm the I'm the guy sitting in the corner. I don't do really well with uh, meeting new people or strangers in social environments. I'm great in a sales conversation. And in fact, I wrote a book called Sales EQ around about sales specific emotional intelligence, really because I noticed that there are a lot of really good salespeople that are like that. Like they're not what you would consider to be like these people that go out and they're they're total extroverts and they're, you know, they, the gift of gab, which really isn't a, a, a something that helps you sell anymore. Talking at people doesn't really make people like you any better. So. So I, I'm really an introvert. I get my energy from being alone. I'm happy being alone. I really don't need people around me that much other than my wife, who I love more than anything else in the world. But she's the only person that I really, I can't like physically live without. I like to have her in my life. But other than that, I just don't need people. What I am is an extrovert, if you were to talk about it in a sales conversation. So when I'm in a sales conversation, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm on stage. And my good friend, Matthew Pollard, who wrote uh, The Introvert's Edge, would tell you that I'm also very, very good at using a system for selling and a system for engineering relationships and engineering connections in a way that allows me to bend the probability that when I ask for someone to do something, that they comply with the request that I've made of them. 
And that's where I think being an introvert really helps you is that I don't get caught up in whether or not people like me because I don't really care if people like me. I get really caught up in uh, in finding ways to like them and, and creating emotional connections that bind them to me in a way that makes it almost impossible for them not to say yes when I ask. Well, Jeb, I think you have just squashed three myths right there in that. So let's break each one apart and look at them separately. The first one being the obvious that salespeople need to be extroverts and that introverts cannot be salespeople. So what do you have to say about all that? Let's go ahead and break that down first. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, let's just think about it like this. In every interaction with another human being, there are five basic questions that that person is asking about you in that, in that interaction. Now those five questions are both being asked at the conscious level and at the subconscious level. So sometimes people don't really know, they just know how they feel about it. And that's, do I like you? So it's basic for human beings, right? So in a lot of cases, we, we, we don't know that we like or dislike a person, but I mean, our, I guess our subconscious mind knows that before we know it, but it's, it's something that happens sort of instantaneously. So do I like you? Do you listen to me? Do you make me feel important? The need for significance, the need to feel like you matter is the most insatiable human need. Do you understand me? So do you get me in my problems and do I trust and believe you? So when you start thinking about those questions, do I like you, do you listen to me, do you make me feel important, do you get me in my problems, do I trust and believe you? If we just start with the basic, do I like you? I mean, you know, dressing nice, being nice, you know, being polite, all those things matter, but the easiest way to be likable is just to listen to someone. I mean, if you think about it, the most unlikable human being in your life is a person standing in front of you talking about themselves, right? So what do a lot of salespeople do? If you're an extrovert, you walk through the door and you're pitching. And a lot of the reasons why you're pitching is because you're an extrovert and you get your energy right from you know engaging other people and you think that by talking you're in control and by the way when you're talking it makes you feel important but it's not about you it's about them so when you're listening to another person not only are you having the opportunity to be likable but you're also making the person feel important and significant you make them feel significant because by listening to the other person in the conversation you're giving them the greatest gift that you can give another human being. Now, let's just step back. I want you to think about this for a moment because that gift matters. In sales, now this is not in a personal relationship. In a personal relationship, if I'm meeting you at the bar, or I'm getting to know you on a podcast, it's a little bit different. We don't have like a core objective. But in sales, there's an objective. I'm in the conversation for a reason. I'm not there for my health. I'm there to get you to comply with a request. It could be a micro commitment. It could be a buying commitment. It could be one of those things. So when I make you feel significant, I give you that gift. When I ask you to make a commitment, you owe me. Like I, I tap into the rule or the law of reciprocity by making you feel important. I also create a deep emotional connection, like you feel better about me. Along the way, as I'm listening to you, and this is what introverts are really, really good at. We're really great at just letting people talk. So as I'm listening to you, I'm doing a couple of things. One, I'm triggering the self-disclosure loop, which gets you to start talking to me and I'm getting you to tell me your story. You're teaching me your language. And so as you teach me, teach me your language, as I come back to you, because there's a point where I have to say something, like I'm gonna build a value bridge from the things that you're telling me to how I'm gonna solve your problem. We are in a sales conversation. When I build that value bridge, I do it in your language, not my language, taps into the similarity bias, which makes you feel like you're closer to me, which means that you're gonna be more, I'm gonna be more trustworthy to you. So, so by what introverts do so well, is they're able to listen. They understand that, that sales is a language of questions and they understand at the, at the core foundational level that influence is derived not from what you say, but from what you hear. So all I'm doing in a sales process is engineering the, 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 the relationship. I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in a position to build that emotional connection. And I know that when I answer those five questions in the affirmative, it becomes almost impossible for you not to comply with my request. In other words, not to advance through the sales process with me, which is important, or to end up buying from me. And it's it's all about building that relationship. And, and that's why introverts overall are, are fantastic salespeople. Now, introverts do have a problem. And, and the problem, Johnny, is that introverts are afraid to go out and be a little pushy. Extroverts have a, a, a real 
um, advantage when it comes to prospecting and interrupting people and cold calling. And where introverts have a real advantage when it comes to empathy and being able to step in someone else's shoes and to be other focused. So for most salespeople, we have to balance those two things. If you're an introvert, what we have to do is teach you to be intentional about outcomes, right? You have to be intentional about asking for what you want and, and about going out and interrupting people. And if you're an extrovert, what we have to do is teach you to be intentional about empathy, about listening and stepping in other people's shoes and putting away your self-centered need to be the center of attention and put someone else at the center of attention, which means that you're going against everything that's happening in your head. Like, I want to be, I want to be important. I want to be this, I want to be, tell my story. I want to do all those things. I want to talk. We have to work on both of those things. And it's the balance between the two, because most people are either one or the other. People are either outcome driven or they're empathy driven. And we have to, you have to learn that. We have to learn the process. And I know that you teach this in your practice and your podcast, The Art of Charm. You have to learn how to to shift and, and get control or rise above your natural communication style so you can better connect with other people. But I always begin with those five questions as how I'm connecting as an introvert.